Hello. Uh, okay, this is uh, my homework uh, for the Paul McCorter's Raspberry Pi Pico W lesson number 17, uh, in which we are using a button uh, with a pull-up resistor to turn an LED on and off. Um, the theory being that when the button is pressed, the LED goes on, and then when the button is pressed again, the LED goes off. Okay, so we'll start by importing the libraries. Uh, so from machine import pin and from time import sleep. Then we will set up the buttons. Um, I have the the button. Sorry, set up the pins. For the, I've got the button uh, connect pin fourteen, the same as uh, the same as Paul had on his uh, his lesson. Um, the LED I connect to this one here, which is uh, GPIO pin number seventeen, uh, and then I've got the uh, resistor for the LED going back to ground on this side. That's the ground there. Okay, so uh, button pin equals 14, the LED pin equals 17. Okay, we'll set up the button, button equals pin Pop pin. Let's see. An in pin. And we want to turn on the pull up resistor. Oops. Try that again. Pull. Underscore. Up. Come on. There. Pull up. Okay, uh, the LED pin sorry, LED, let's start again. Equals pin LED pin. That's a that's an output on that pin. Okay. Now I'm going to start by checking the state of the button. That's oh, right. Checking this. Yes, yeah, checking the state of the button before we start the actual uh, while loop. Um, just because it's going to be easier later on. So button state. Button value, so it'll give us a number for the for the button to start with, and then we'll start the loop. While well, true, and then I'm going to start by setting another uh, variable for the previous button state. The previous button state is going to be equal to button state. So we've already checked the state of the button before we start the loop and then as we start the loop we're going to set the previous button state to the same value. Then we're going to check the button state again. the same as we did before the loop, but we're actually putting a new number into it. And then we're going to check whether that new number of button state is the same as the previous 
um, condition or whether it's dropped. So if button state is less than previous but state so if the value of the button bear in mind that when the button isn't pressed the value will be 1 and when the button is pressed the value will be 0 so if the button state is lower than the previous button state then it means the button has just been pressed so in that in that situation we're going to turn the led on so we're going to do led dot toggle and that will just change the state of the led and then we're going to sleep uh, not wait one of a second just so that we get a bit of a chance for everything to reset before it starts the whole thing again. Hopefully that should be it, so let's uh, keep our fingers crossed and see what happens. Okay, so at the moment nothing's happening, so let's press the button and the LED goes on. The LED stays on until we press the button again and it goes off. Each time we press the button, it goes on. Each time we press the button, it goes off. Okay. Um, if we just stop it for a second. If we were to have a button on the, sorry, finger on the button before we start, then just to prove it's, it's not working at the moment because I've stopped the program. If I had my finger on the button to start with and press start, the button, would, the light wouldn't come on straight away because the button hasn't changed. And then it will wait until the next time the button is actually pressed. So it doesn't matter what state the button's in to start with, it can be pressed or it could be not pressed. It's only when you press the button the next time, once the program's running, that it will actually turn the LED on or off. Oops. There. That's that. Hopefully that was okay for everybody and uh, see you next week.